how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right. Okay, so at the end of the last one, I said that this one would be talking about the decision of how and when to, to kill off one of your characters. Um, I also said that this might be a topic that I covered earlier on, but if it is, that's fine. It's nice to sort of revisit some of these topics sometimes just to sort of show or we'll see if I have something new to say about it. Um, sometimes your opinions sort of change and develop as you get older and you experience more things and, and, and whatever. But, you know, if, it, if I am saying some of the things to what I said last time, if there is a previous one, because <laughs> I'm not sure if there is, um, then, you know, it was probably in the longer, quiet format anyway, so as with the, the one on the visiting Etienne, you know, it, sometimes it's just nice just to redo things, you know, you know, you know especially on a channel that doesn't have a whole lot of viewers anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> so let's, let's get to it. Um, so... Some writers find the decision to kill off a character easy, some writers don't, it depends on, I think sometimes it depends on the character themselves, um, I mean for me personally, if it's a character that I'm not particularly invested in then it's really easy to kill them off, um, if it's a character I'm more invested in then sometimes the decision to do so is a lot harder, and, you know, it is like you're, you're making the decision to kill off one of your friends. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't make the decision and I don't, you know, shy away from, you know, if I feel like they're, they're the reason for this character to die, um, I will kill, kill the character off. And sometimes because the, because I am dealing with my multiverse and, you know, just because a character has been killed off doesn't mean they're permanently dead, depending on how they died and, and various different things like that. So the character does have a possibility of coming back, but I think specifically for the purposes of, of this particular vlog, I'm going to focus on when I can't bring that character back. Now I have to actually think of a time where I haven't. <laughs> mm, I might have challenged myself too much here. Okay, um, so I think I, I think it should be more a case of when the decision is sort of supposed to be more permanent even if the character has some sort of echo or something that still sort of exists afterwards um if the decision to sort of kill them out off has been sort of take away them being a character for the majority of the other characters or them being alive for the majority of other characters um i think might be a better way of looking at it because on a few occasions where the death is supposed to be permanent but they sort of come back um they're sort of coming back has been to a limited number of characters and has involved various complicated things which means they don't they haven't technically come back but they kind of have um they kind of haven't it's really how you sort of see it and think about it i think <laughs> um <clears throat> so like as i was saying you know the the decision to sort of kill off a character is is never never an easy one for, for me to make if it's a character I'm invested in. If it's a character I'm not so invested in. I mean, sometimes I write characters just to die <laughs> because it's important to the story. Um, but, you know, it, it, if I've written a character that I'm invested in and something tells me that the plot is, is leading towards them having to die, then I do try to give that as, as much weight as, as I can, especially, if, as I said, if it's a character I particularly care about or one that I'm particularly fond of. Um, I, I could give some examples, but those would be so spoilery. Um, okay, so in the Realms and Reality series, which is the first book about um, and in the second book in particular, there are quite a few character deaths. Some for characters that I wasn't particularly invested in, they were just introduced for that story, so I hadn't spent a lot of time with them. And some of the characters that had appeared in the first book, so I had spent that bit more time with them and, and whatever else. Um, and actually, this is probably a really good example of when I hesitate over killing 
off the character um, for whatever reason. Um, because I, I have two characters from, from the first book which I decided I may want to kill off. Um, one of them, I just went for it and made a decision because I wanted to have that kind of impact. And the second one kind of lingered and kind of lingered um, sort of in the background for really a few books and then um, book five actually you, you got their death um, and I think I think I couldn't have killed them off in the second book um, because I, I'm still so invested in, in the character um, but after going through everything that happens in book three and everything that happens in book four where you're sort of taking a step back or you're, you're going along with other characters then making the decision to go no she should she should die um, yeah, that's given away the gender, that doesn't help. <laughs> this character should die. Um, in book five became a lot easier um, because I, I'd had that chance to take a step back and I kind of realised that, you know, I sort of wimped out a little bit in, in book two and I was kind of like, no, let's, let's do what the decision should have been in book, book two and, and, you know, kill her off because... There, there was no reason for her to come back because I already had so many of the characters I had to deal with at that point. There was like too many characters. Just, just let her die. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but that's it's kind of a, a particularly unique situation to to that series where you know it. it I introduced some characters that I knew were going to be killed off. I introduced um, a couple of other characters that. I hadn't intended necessarily to kill off um, and I killed off one of them and I hesitated over killing off the other one because actually I didn't want either of them to die because I actually quite like their characters and I would have liked them to sort of continue on in the series but as the series sort of developed there there was no real place for these two particular characters anyway and they served a better purpose by dying and, and you know enhancing the plot of, of the second book <laughs> <laughs> and the potential threats and, and, and whatever else of the particular reality that the characters were, were in and you know that in and of itself was you know I think kind of a little bit my growth as a, as a writer because it's it's so hard making that decision to kill off a character you actually like it's so hard um but you know actually pushing myself to actually do it and then do it again uh, for that particular series was, you know, it, it definitely made me sort of rethink really about how I tackle killing off characters. Um, and, you know, it, it, it wasn't the sort of the first sort of big character death that I'd done. Um, that happens in book eight of the Tales, and I know that's a horrible spoiler, please read the Tales. It's such, such an emotional thing, uh, book eight of, of the Tales saga. But again, that I think that was the the one character death that probably has the biggest impact on me. Whenever I go back through and I read the Tales saga and I reach that point, there's there's something about the weight that I kind of bring to it because this is this is a character that you've spent eight books getting to know and hopefully like. <laughs> I mean, I do, but you know, it's just me. Um, and he, he is an interesting character and, and one of the ones that you kind of you're kind of rooting for in a lot of ways. Um, and I just had to make that decision to 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 kill him off. And I I made that decision going into book eight that that was going to be his his last hurrah. And this is one of the reasons why I say that book eight very much ends that first part of the tale saga. Um, partly because of, of of his death and, and everything else that sort of goes on it, it, it that's why book eight feels like such a perfect ending to the first half of that saga because they have this huge emotional weight at the end of of, of the series or the end of that half of the series and I think that's why that's why I, I you know as good as I think the second half of the series is uh, the next generation stuff is there, there is nothing that beats that moment in, in book eight and, and the aftermath of that moment in book eight. And it's just, the weight is just so real. And, and you know, it, it, was, it left an impact on me as the writer, which um, I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but it's certainly, you know, one of, one of the more, well, 
emotional death that I, I've given a character and that I've experienced for a character. Um, as I said, you know, that I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it's things like that. It's certainly when you kind of know um, that a particular character is going to die at a particular point and you're kind of writing things around that sort of idea and sort of foreshadowing it or whatever else it's you know it's one of those things where you as a writer are kind of going and almost moving yourself through the the state the uh steps of grief and, and whatever else and it's it's a weird kind of experience as a writer when you're having to make the decision to to kill a character especially a character that you like because you do feel like you're losing someone <laughs> you very much feel like you're you're losing someone. Um, so it's yeah. I think even with characters that you kind of just introduced, even if you've introduced them for the sake of them dying, you, you do get enough of an investment in their character most of the time. At least I do um, to sort of not really want to have to kill them off. Um, and I think it's it's important, you know, if if their death is supposed to have an impact that you write them in a way where their death will have an impact and um for example <clears throat> my current project um i do i have uh killed off one of the characters that you, you do meet um and you are aware of from, from the beginning of the book um and it was a decision i sort of came to partly because I wanted to see the aftermath or the character that you, you were following if there was somebody they were particularly close to. Um, and partly because of the reflective nature of this story to Hyena Boy, um, because this, this was a relationship that was reflective of the relationship that Jay has in, in Hyena Boy. Um, trying not to spoil what relationship it is as, as much as I can um, and because of that that sort of reflective nature because you know both of these characters took great strength from this particular figure in their life um, it almost sort of became important to show that you know that's not something that can be relied on um, because life is messy and, and things sometimes just happen um, whether we expect them to or not. So I made a decision that, you know, a hyena boy got to keep this relationship, um, got to keep this person in their life and they didn't lose that connection, that, you know, that important connection that they had. Um, but this character would have to and in doing so it's changed the story and and changed like where the story has gone and, and different relationships um that this character is developing with the people around him um in a way that i kind of didn't realize that it would um because i initially had this this sort of very clear idea in my head as to when certain things sort of happen and sort of almost by killing off this particular character suddenly the story shifted and certain events and certain points in time that were kind of like well I initially thought this happened because of you know this going on in the background suddenly became oh that's what was going on in the background <laughs> oh that makes a lot more sense now oh okay <laughs> that's what's going on that's why this particular thing it happens in this particular way it makes so much more sense now um so yeah i think if i hadn't made that decision to to kill off that particular character um i don't think the story would be as strong as it is it wouldn't have reached the points that it has reached um and the direction that it, it's kind of shifted in um but at the same time it was still a really hard decision to make and I do feel really bad <laughs> that, 
<laughs> I felt I had to make it. <laughs> I do. I I genuinely do still feel, you know, that even within the characters within the story itself, they are still feeling the weight of this particular loss, whether it's sort of consciously or subconsciously. Uh, within the narrative, you can feel that the weight of this loss is still sort of there and is sort of going on in the background. And, you know, it's yeah, yeah. I I think I made an important decision by making that decision, and I think whenever I decide to kill off a, a character, it's it, a not a decision that I've taken lightly, and, and b it almost always leads to more potential. And, and better plot lines and more strength and courage within the, the characters that are going on. And so I think it's a hard decision to make. It's always a hard decision to make, but it's an important decision to make. Um, sometimes it's the most important decision to make because having that sort of character maybe is a bit of a crutch. Um, you know, it's it's good, it's great, it's, it's whatever else, but yeah, sometimes you have to take that crutch away in order for things to strengthen and bloom and become what they can be. Um, which, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I hope this made sense. I know it's been a bit rambly and babbly and a little bit all over the place and that the problem with talking about character death is you don't really want to spoil the story. <laughs> and, you know, talking about characters being killed off just kind of spoils the surprise. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, that's kind of my views and, and kind of how I feel about it and kind of how it sort of does influence um, the, the progression of my stories is, you know, by giving it the weight that it needs to be given, by, you know, having that sort of connection, especially when it's a character that I care about. Um, and then, you know, dealing with the aftermath and, and moving things forward the way they need to be moved forward. Yeah, it can give the story a lot more strength um, and, and weight to it. And it's, it's all about how you handle it. And yeah. I, it's not easy, but you do it. <laughs> because unfortunately, death is one of those things that happen. Um, okay, so this week we were talking about the deaths of characters. Um, next week, I want to talk about how and when I decide to allow my characters to procreate. <laughs> or oh, in other words, next week is going to be about birth. <laughs> Alright, okay, I, I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting, even though it's been a bit babbly. I hope you're looking forward to the next one, and I will see you next time. See ya! <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!